So we're here at the Shambles in Process, formerly a children's daycare and gymnasium, and Joel's talking me through the floor plan. What do you got? Well, we got a little uh, double bathroom action here leading out into the bar area. We have some uh, seats along the main bar, which is made out of 800-year-old fur. We have hundred year old fur? Absolutely. Yeah. Nice. Uh, harvested off of Mount St. Helens back um, God, 60 plus years ago by Weyerhaeuser and the, the wood was left behind but we milled it and we're bringing it back to life. Nice. We have 30 taps of beer. We have a liquor wall. So this is your liquor bar area. Uh, this is the beer area, although you can drink anywhere you want. It's all 21 and over. Back door leading off into a parking area. Back up to the top, we've got a market with a smoked meat deli case, uh, selling pâtés, salamis, charcuterie of sorts. Um, so you can take that home to go. It's also our place for our pickup for the butcher shop, which is creating an online butchery and providing meats for our restaurant. What is an online butchery? What does that mean? Imagine someone creating the Etsy of meat. That's me. Etsy of meat. Yeah. So. Break it down. I create an app. It's got lists of what we choose to offer. Packages, bundles, a la carte. You place your order online, you swing into my bar, grab a cocktail, and pick up your order. Sort of like a, a meat CSA, if you will. But it's an online presence versus it being raw in-house presence. And you pick it up yourself as opposed to delivery. Yes, exactly, yeah, we don't deliver. But we do have uh, smoked and cured meats to be picked up a la carte in-house, which you don't have to order online. Although you could include but those But why items. would people order that online instead of just coming in like a typical cons customer? We don't have an on, uh, we don't have an in-store raw butcher counter for you to shop from. The initial plan was to do so, but with city permitting ordinances, we were shorted on our size. And so uh, we decided to put that online versus struggle with trying to fit a raw meat scene into a bar. It's kind of awkward for people to watch raw meats being prepared while drinking, but back behind the scenes, and we're going to be doing um, groups where we'll show people how that gets done. We do have an art gallery as well to use up some of that space. Nice. Any uh, particular ideas about what kind of art gallery that'll be? It can be anything from a local photographer to somebody who wants to do say pottery on a pedestal or if I just want to put up some new Belgian bikes with some mannequins drinking beer and do a display I can do it this door is not public accessible but it does open up into the gallery which of all windows will be easily viewable uh, you lead back into our kitchen area prep um, more prep dish pit back door onto the deck and then uh, our dishwasher is located here with the ice machine and freezers. We do have a butcher shop uh, going in on the opening. We have a eight by eight foot meat curing chamber with a visible window. So you can see our cured meats, salamis, hams, um, guanciale, anything that we choose to cure, smoke or age will all be in there. Uh, this is our meat walk-in inside of our butcher shop and uh, then we also have lots of prep space and uh, another set of sinks to clean up with. Nice. And what's the basic idea behind the shambles in terms of what you're offering and how that's different from what you might find around town? Well, the combination of these different businesses hasn't been done yet here in Seattle. I found it to be something of an amalgamation of what I've done for a living. So taking snapshots of everything that I've done um, and putting it into one place so I can enjoy what I uh, where you work. So I went around the country and part around the world looking for other people doing similar uh, businesses and found that nobody in the Northwest was doing anything quite like that. So I wrote up a business plan and did some touring, grabbed ideas from different places, and then found a location in Seattle, went through the city process, and a year and a half later, after much blood, sweat, and tears, uh, we're on our way. And uh, we are fully permitted now and we've had all our inspections done to close up the walls, so we're closing up the walls, dude! <laughs> nice. So this space, again, used to be like a children's space yes. for gymnastics and daycare and birthday parties. Yeah. And show me, are you up for giving me a sure. sense of what that Yeah, children used to tumble here. 23 years ago, this was the and little now adults gym. will. Now adults will tumble here. Uh, this is my lead, this is Josh. How's it hey, going? What's happening? Good, that's nice. He is a magic man. So what do we got in this room right here before you leave? 
This is your market here. So market will be in this corner. Uh, bar door, front door coming in. So you would enter the front. This is the liquor section uh, or open bar for relaxing. We'll have a community table here, the full wrap bar. Here's where you would belly up to have your cocktails. Look at the uh, liquor itself. You can see the curb pour to make sure that our cooler is even and uh, that it won't sink or settle improperly. Open beams, open structure. 1926 is the year of this side of the building. Nice. What part of town are we in here? We're over uh, right between Maple Leaf and Ravenna. Nice. Right on the cusp. Follow me, we'll go to the kitchen. So we're at the Shambles here in Maple Leaf, Ravenna neighborhood. I'm with Joel, the proprietor and friend who's deep in the process of transforming this space into a future hub of fine dining and what is it a hub of? Uh, we're a butchery bar, so a hub of meat, hub of other, and uh, it's a hub of finer hub. libations that you'll find in town. Sweet. Um, What's up with all this wood right here? This is the barn wood. We uh, take this wood from a friend of ours. We took the wood from a friend out in Chehalis who sold me the upper floor of his 1930s barn. It is all uh, also old growth and it's shiplap and it needs some attention. But once we polish it up, I think you're gonna see something that's uh, quite spectacular. Nice. We do have the kitchen here. So uh, this is where the stove will go. We're in the pit. This is where you'll be doing most of the cooking. Sandwich prep station, bouncing back and forth, pats and pans up around the corners. That is the meat curing window that we see here. So right there through the pass through, you'll be able to see all of the meat hanging while dining in our bar. Uh, we're gonna go this way, this is. Wait, so what's this whole meat window? I don't really, I don't get it. Uh, so in this room, it has no refrigeration. We're trying to inoculate salamis and make sure that the humidity the air movement, everything is addressed. The temperature, we want the room to be not cold, but not too hot. We want product to ferment and grow and change and age and turn sweet and nutty um, and translucent the way you want it. Uh, and to do that, you need to have a special area to do so. We'll have a fermentation chamber outside of the curing chamber here where we'll uh, be adding um, the inoculants and making sure the products are, uh, are set to go into the cooler. Sweet. Or ager. Um, we're going to have all of our dry goods here. This is where the entrance to the butchery is, and we're in the process of cleaning up the walls. You can see the open plumbing with all the updated pecs and newer fixtures that you can find. Um, nice. And this is the beer cooler and pieces? This is the uh, meat cooler. Comes so in panels? Panels, yep. So the panels. Custom, yeah. Are not custom. Well, they're, they're a certain size that you would order online. A lot of it's um, mm -hmm. order by size, and they've already got the panels set for pretty much every size. But you can go custom. Cool. Uh, we have rooftop condensers, which are in these boxes. They'll be on the roof soon. Keeping this place um, the right temperature is no problem with brand new air conditioners going in on all three major sections of the building. Nice. So at this stage, you guys are just in here every single day grinding concrete and getting ready yeah every day we are moving forward with either removing wires switching lights around framing tying off plumbing laying in new concrete grinding concrete we're drywalling currently and once we're done drywalling nice. uh, we will be painting and finish trimming so I figure about a month from now we'll have this place actually functioning for wow. uh, practice to get ready for all y'all ambitious so just on a personal note, give me the sense of the journey here. You used to do a lot of work in the beer oh, space. Oh, sure. And... I was a buyer at Whole Foods Market. I was their beer buyer uh, for 10 years, working with um, the finest liquors and beer as well as wine. I led classes on beer and pairing with food. Uh, before I was a beer buyer, I uh, was a charcuterie buyer and a specialist, roasting my own meats, procuring cured meats slicing them and understanding the flavor profiles behind that, uh, as well as being a cheesemonger for Whole Foods and a cook. So I'm bringing all of that drive and expertise to one location uh, in an old style neighborhood market that you just don't find anywhere around currently.
Sweet. And that's not just in Seattle. You mean in this country, right? Yes, absolutely. I, uh, I really can't find an, an example of this anywhere. There are places similar in San Francisco, Chicago, and uh, a couple friends in Portland are doing parts of this, but no one's doing all of that in one location, let alone bringing the connection between the small farms that we are lucky to have enough here on the islands or up near uh, Duval, Arlington, Carnation, where some of the best beef is ranched in the country. I get to work with the ranchers and spotlight those limited cuts on our online site and as well in the charcuterie and on the plates of the food that we serve. Awesome. So this is the shambles. Tell me a little bit about how, what's that name? Where's that come from? Shambles. Well, I went off to uh, Yorkshire when I was in England in 2011 and uh, I went through an area in Old York where uh, butchery as we know it really started and uh, as you can expect it was pretty medieval literally by all senses of the word uh, where they had the buildings built close together they were tall to keep the light from penetrating down to the street level where the meat was hanging off of hooks under the eaves of the buildings um, below the building was the shop and above the building was typically where the butchers would live and there was a whole row of butcheries uh, and uh, bars as well uh, and the meat would hang on these hooks. They would drip onto tables known as the fleshimals, and the fleshimals would then drip onto a, uh, a sidewalk leading to a channel down the middle of the street where they would literally just dump all of the blood and innards and bits as well as whatever was refused from your home, sewage, that sort of thing, all went to the center channel. Wait a sec, so how will those same elements be dealt with here in a more modern space? <laughs> well, we're not Seattle. throwing our, uh, our refuse into the street. We happen to have a, uh, a nice uh, in-ground uh, fat separator and grease trap that we're going to be cleaning regularly. Uh, but um, terms of the shambles will uh, be thrown around here. Um, the term going to shambles really comes from this area. When it used to be a fancy place for folks to go and shop and dine and be seen, later on in life uh, the shambles became a place of despair, uh, drug use and prostitution. So the term meat market really kind of comes from the shambles directly. Hmm. We're a meat market. <laughs> I'm not a madam, but uh, don't sell yourself short. No, yeah. So the the uh, the history has uh, deep meaning, um, and we're trying to bring a piece of old England to Seattle. So my theme, the decor, the time period, everything's trying to hit that late 1800s feel. That includes my cocktails, um, and sort of the way we do it down here. We're a little rough around the edges. But where are the finer things in life? Nice. What's the vision sort of five, ten years out? Five, ten years. A uh, couple more locations if I'm lucky within uh, the Seattle area. Uh, I hope to bring uh, a porch around the back corner here. If I'm lucky, I'll, uh, I'll get to continue serving Seattle and uh, telling stories and drinking in my own bar after hours. It's one of the finer things of uh, enjoying the fruits of your labor. A couple more locations would be great. They say three is the magic number, but I'll be satisfied if uh, number one just takes off and keeps me happy. Um, Sweet. Possibly other states. We'll see. Nice. Well, we have been, I've been hearing from you about it for years. It's great to see the manifestation of your vision and your, uh, your work. Thank you. The fruit of your loins. We have, Literally. Uh, we have a lot of ideas. Nice. And I think uh, with the city's help, we've been able to execute almost all of them. Uh, even the city is excited to have this project underway. Why so? Well, they've never seen anything quite like it. We were having a hard time getting through some of the permits because they didn't understand what we were doing. But what's um, the essence of what's so different here and why? I mean, I heard everything you said. It sounds great. Yeah. What is the essence of what is so different that when they look at that, they think, eh, we've never really done anything like this before? I think it's just uh, it's just the combination of, of businesses. They, they're used to seeing butcher shops. They're used to seeing bars. They're used to seeing um, kitchens. But um, within those uh, decisions, there's parameters that have to be met. So the, the minute details and the measuring, that, that took a lot of work to figure out how to put this place together. Sweet. You have anything with the logo on it here that you've been? Yeah. That you can show me. Let's see. Oh, we'll uh, let's go to the front door right let's here. Let's do it. Sweet. Get a sense of what the street front looks like here. Nice. 
nice. Right so this is door. 15th, and that's Lake City Way right up there. So the corner of 15th, Northeast, and 80th. And this is the future home of the Shambles. Once again, I'm Len Davis, a Seattle-based filmmaker, and I'm here with my brother, Joel Klemenhagen, at the future home of the Shambles. It's always nice to hang out with someone a, a whole head taller than me. And uh, it's great just to see the progress. Thanks, Len. Tons of luck with it, my friend. Congratulations, brother. Stay fresh.